Unknowingly to most people, Russia and China have been attacking U.S. satellites every single day. Both countries have also tested hypersonic weapons that enable them to wreak havoc on the United States. Now, it's the U.S.'s turn to make a move in this intercontinental chess game. And they've just made one that could almost qualify them as a grandmaster. One that involves watching over the entire world from space every second of every day. Because as recent news shows, these threats are as real as ever. Russian defense officials have revealed that the country fired its Kinzhal air-to-ground hypersonic missile into Ukraine in an attack on March 18, 2022. This marks the first time this missile, which travels at five times the speed of sound, has been used in combat. And Ukraine, with no defenses against hypersonic weapons, was defenseless against the Kinzhal, causing many to consider this an overkill. China's entry into this threatening stance comes in the form of a larger hypersonic missile than the Kinzhal, and is five times faster, too. It's known as the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System. China's FOBS is a nuclear-capable missile that jets into low Earth orbit and then deorbits at the right time to kamikaze into a target anywhere on Earth, like an intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM, but with the added plus of higher range and insanely greater speeds. China tested this weapon in 2021, catching U.S. intelligence by surprise, to put it mildly. Such a weapon could make legacy missile defense systems, although advanced, completely useless. Once launched, a FOBS takes off to low Earth orbit, circling the planet for as long as necessary till its target is in sight. Once the target is spotted, the hypersonic missile deorbits, clocking its Mach 27 top speed. The FOBS can be pictured as a space shuttle that's fitted with a nuclear warhead as its payload, rather than a capsule full of astronauts. With an operational range spanning across the entire Earth, the FOBS can attack the U.S. from whatever direction, arriving at least 10 minutes quicker than an ICBM would. The FOBS also comes with a scary level of agility and intelligence. They're able to maneuver away from defense systems en route to a target, making them even more difficult to track and shoot down. This high-speed, agility, and intelligence combo combines to deliver a level of unpredictability that attempts to limit the U.S. to only a few minutes of reaction time, from when they spot the missile to when it makes a dent on U.S. soil. And this would be the case if the U.S. was stuck with its older defense systems. But it's not. The U.S. has been proactive and reactive to the growing foreign capabilities, responding with a new and advanced development system that's sci-fi enough to feature in a Marvel movie. Billions of dollars, hundreds of satellites, and a team of world-renowned companies. The U.S. is responding with a fleet of satellites that will be sent to orbit to track hypersonic weapons. In the latest milestone of this undertaking, the U.S. Space Defense Agency, or SDA, announced recently that it was awarding $1.3 billion in contracts to send 28 small satellites into space. Scheduled for launch in three years, these satellites are designed to provide the initial missile warning and missile tracking capabilities of the future National Defense Space Architecture. The National Defense Space Architecture consists of multiple components, including two layers of space-based platforms, the transport layer and the tracking layer. The transport layer is a communication layer that will provide assured, resilient, low-latency military data and connectivity worldwide to all kinds of warfighter platforms planned as a constellation varying in size from 300 to more than 500 satellites in low Earth orbit. Once completed, 95% of Earth will have at least two satellites in view at any given time, while 99% of the planet will have at least one satellite in view at any given time. Next is the tracking layer, which will provide global indications, warning, tracking, and targeting of advanced missile threats including hypersonic missile systems via space-based sensing, algorithms, novel processing schemes, data fusion across sensors, and tactical data products that are available on demand. The SDA's recent $1.3 billion is to fund the Tranche 1 satellites of the tracking layer, $700 million of which was awarded to L3 Harris Technologies, while $617 million was awarded to Northrop Grumman Strategic Space Systems. Each company would deliver 14 of the combined 28 prototype satellites expected to be launched in the first batch from the SDA's operations and integration centers and the Army's Redstone Arsenal in Alabama. It would take four different launches of seven apiece, beginning in April 2025, to transport all 28 satellites to space. The reason for this being that each satellite will be placed in a polar orbit. 
That is, the satellites will be in four different dimensional planes to effectively traverse the globe from north to south, enabling a true omnipresent eye in the sky that, according to SDA Director Derek Tournier, successfully provides early missile warning and missile tracking capabilities for advanced missile threats. These capabilities being so close to fruition is a testament to how quickly the U.S. has made a course correction on its space-based missile defense and warning strategy. It was only four years ago when now-retired General John Hyten, the head honcho at U.S. Strategic Command at the time, was highlighting the importance of modernizing the Pentagon's space-based sensing capability to deal with emerging threats. And Congress couldn't agree more, as they provided the SDA $550 million in additional funding in the fiscal year 2022 to accelerate the deployment of the all-too-critical tracking layer component. At this point, every department is on board with the National Defense Space Architecture development and its approach to adapting to new threats by creating a constellation of hundreds of small satellites that will make it harder to blind U.S. military satellites in space by distributing the service's capabilities instead of concentrating it on just a few space-based assets, as it is now. This is a particularly essential move, not only to counter China's FOBs missiles, but to neutralize the impact of Russia successfully compromising U.S. satellites. Because if reports tell us anything, it's that they have indeed been trying. As space continues to be a vital domain for military activities, anti-satellite technologies are on the rise. Recent Google Earth images revealed the construction of what appears to be a sophisticated laser system at a Russian space facility, a system that could blind satellites in space. The construction is taking place at the Russian Ministry of Defense's Krona Space Facility, home of the massive, highly successful Ratan 600 radio telescope, which says some on the quality to expect of the anti-satellite weapon being developed. The existence of this weapon was brought to light in an in-depth, open-source investigation that analyzed a library load of public satellite imagery, solicitation documents from Russian industrial contractors, and Russian financial documents. These analyses revealed the development of a project named Kalina, which was described in the financial documentation obtained by the Space Review as a laser system designed for electro-optical warfare that can permanently blind adversarial satellites by shining laser pulses so bright they can damage optical sensors. This is in contrast to Dazzlers, which are lasers aimed at only temporarily blinding optic systems. The Russian Kalina would have a separate tracking system with adaptive optics to help it better mitigate atmospheric disturbance. Along with this system, the laser itself features a transmit-receive system to measure laser light reflected back at it from its target, in order to better aim directly at the optical systems on its targets, which are the bullseye spots that, once destroyed, would leave a target satellite blind. On the topic of potentially being a pain to American satellites, China is also in the conversation. A 2022 paper published in the Chinese journal Modern Defense Technology by researchers at the Beijing Institute of Tracking and Telecommunications Technology called for the development of a combination of soft and hard kill methods to take out SpaceX's Starlink satellites and to destroy the constellation's overall operating system. According to the paper, Starlink is a valuable military resource that can provide more stable and reliable communication capabilities for the combat units deployed by the U.S. military around the world. It could also provide high-definition pictures and even live video for U.S. forces. With that in mind, it's possible that Russia, with the Kalina, has solved the soft-kill method of taking out satellites, enabling them to take out satellites without creating risks of space debris for their own satellites. It's no longer news. The shadow war in space has begun, with the three main players, Russia, China, and the United States, arming up with the most advanced technologies their countries have to offer. Everything from electro-optic warfare to missiles that shoot into orbit is now involved, ushering in the need for a new class of American defense systems, one that revolves around a blanket of satellites watching over the world at all times to make sure that adversary weapons can be handled satisfactorily and to ensure that you subscribe to this channel. So kindly do so now. That would be all for now. Thanks for watching.